start of our trip down for the second uh, winter birding bash in KZN. Uh, stopped near Frankfurt. Uh, Andy peering in the background. <laughs> First coffee stop. It's really chilly. Um, but we'll see how the weekend unfolds and what birds we get. Hope to get as many specials as we got last time. Maybe even more. colder than I expected. Uh, we stopped at the garage at Harry Smith. Uh, everyone traveling down the N3 does. And yeah, it's minus one and it's half past eight in the morning. Very cold. So I'm hoping KZN will be damn sight warmer than this. So we've stopped in Everton at the Mulwaney River Trail. This is where Nasna Warbler apparently has been seen. So we're going to give it a bash. We gave it a bash on the last uh, trip down. Never had enough time and didn't find them. Got a bit more time now, so we'll see what we get. Hopefully we're lucky. Just have to walk along this trail and look out for and listen for Nasna Warbler. So, haven't heard any yet. We'll try. So we're here in the river bed of the Mulwaney River in Everton. Gonna have a listen and look out for Nasna Warbler, see what else we get. Absolutely stunning place. I mean, imagine living in this area and having access to this river every day. What did you put down? Uh, sorry, what was that? Southern, Southern Bobo. Bobo yeah. yeah, now I've added that to the list already. I finished at the Mulwaney River looking for Nasna Warbler. I suspect if they are here, uh, wrong time of year. I mean, you're not generally going to get a Nasna Warbler calling in July. So we tried our best, got crowned eagle overhead calling, a couple of other nice birds. But honestly now, it's on to a shall we for the main birding weekend. at the stunning uh, King's View guest house. Uh, the rooms and the whole venue are really amazing. So yeah, this is our accommodation for the winter birding bash in, in KZN. And it should be a good weekend. Um, time to unpack and settle in. for our Saturday event. We're here at um, Umlil Azi Nature Reserve. The bird was junior today and should be good. Yeah, so I know you got lots of specials on your list, but the main target here in this area, you know, it's the mangrove kingfisher at this time of the year. They, they winter in case of them. So we tend to see them along the coastal forest, especially in the mangrove swamps, and we have uh, palm nut, I don't know if you've seen the palm nut on the way. Um, Green Malkoa, Grey Wexpo, Finfoot, yeah, it's also a big special. Um, yeah, then after that, we're gonna aim for Green Barbet at Tongoy Forest, Yellow Street Green Bull, uh, Coraster Robin Chat, Grey, um, Grey Cuckoo Fright, uh, maybe Stripey Pitch on the Rocks. Uh, yeah, so there's gonna be lots of specials. Then on our way back, that's a grey heron there. So we might come back and do the Amoyen Dam, which is giving us a good chance for uh, picnic geese, uh, white back ducks, and then we'll drive all the way down, coming back home to Tunzini. Probably we are aiming to find the southern bend snake eagle on the whole road to Mtunzin, it's a big road to Mtunzin. So those are the super specials of this area. Yeah, fantastic. So with this species you look out for the red beak. 
very strong dread peak when it faces you but when it turns obviously you see the nice shiny blue color yeah that's very um, unique to you to see that color Quite a surprise, didn't expect that this morning, but really nice for the group. Beautiful view at close range of yellow rumped Tinkerbird. Uh, really awesome, common in KZM, but we don't see them often in counting, so it is really spectacular. Mangrove kingfisher in the bag for the group. It's one of our targets for the day. This guy's above the road and really, really cold. Definitely does have a grey head, eh? Yes. Similar to the, to the no, it's not, not at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the, the colouring, it's, um, it's a very different. Yeah, no, when, when they fly, you don't get that dramatic flash of turquoise that you do with woodland. So we finished at Mtunzini, uh, got some cool stuff. Uh, on to Ngoya Forest next. Coastal scarp forest, uh, which is not far from the coast, and then so the main ones here, and obviously the top one would be the green barbet, which is always the highlight um, of the mall. But there, there are quite a few specials as well. Um, the brown scarp robin is also one of the the good birds you find in this forest. Uh, Chorister robin church. Uh, we do get white start, especially at this time of day, they come low, uh, white start robin, and um, so we might um, get into the grasslands, probably uh, get one of the LBJs, maybe struck a bit. A short tail has been also recorded in winter, in some areas of, of the forest. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to focus more on the outside of the forest, so we will bed a lot on the outskirts of the forest, because as you go deeper, becomes very difficult for to spot any birds in the forest. But we'll stay in as, as, as in, my, in, in the forest margins as, as possible so that we get more birds coming out and we'll be able to see them. So we've gone across to another entrance to the forest in the grasslands. Uh, white eared barbets were dominating the tree where the green barbet should have been. And we've just had a fly past of green twin spots, so good day so far. Yes, 
That's green bobbers in the bag for the whole group. Was video. That was spectacular. Final bird we're trying for, spotted ground thrush. So we're gonna end at twin streams and see if we can get spotted ground thrush. And I think we have to honestly call it a very successful day. This is uh, Twin Streams and uh, Environmental Education Center. Um, as you've been driving here, you would be driving in the middle of sugar cane. You're taking way back in 1952, there was a very genius man under the name of uh, Dr. Ian Gallant. So he, he planted the trees after a long time of farming sugar cane, the family, and then he then introduced the indigenous uh, plants in this area. He started about 80,000 indigenous trees between the two streams. His idea was to take people out for education. That was his main dream and idea to, um, to carry on the message of conservation to people. So the reason why we're here, we're stopping for um, a very special uh, trash it's called a spotted ground rush. They come down in winter in our coastal forests. You know that they all breed up in the Shawi, but at this time they are more like relaxed and easier to come to search for them along the coastal forest. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that. Thank you. Much more time to beautiful bed. Yeah. Check those spots. So we're basically arriving back at the guest house. Uh, good day out. Uh, Junior was awesome as always and got just about everything we were looking for. So yeah, good trip and we'll see what tomorrow holds at Linza Forest. Start of uh, Sunday morning, final day of our trip. We're all busy having breakfast and standing on the deck listening to Wood Owl calling in the property next door. It's quite amazing. <laughs> A second awesome garden bird, uh, busy looking at African goshawk. Um, yeah, I mean, imagine waking up having coffee and having wood owl and African goshawk in your garden in the morning. Doesn't get much better than that. So we're here at Linza Forest. Time to have a stab at um, Eastern Bronze Neck Pigeon. So we're here at the top of the lookout tower on the boardwalk, uh, scanning for Eastern Bronze Neck Pigeon. Hopefully we'll see them when they come out to sun themselves. No luck on the Eastern Bronze Nape Pigeon, so time for some forest birding. And you can hear scaly throated honey guard calling. We're trying to find it. Not an easy bird to find at all. And that is scaly throated honey guard in the bag. It wasn't even on our list to get for the weekend. Uh, brilliant. Had to lie on my back to get that video. Straight above our heads, but awesome sighting. What a ridiculous garden. So we've returned after the forest walk. We're having breakfast and got olive woodpecker in the tree 
from the deck of the house. Uh, olive sunbird as well, collared sunbird, uh, absolutely crazy. I mean, we've had olive woodpecker, African goshawk, uh, wood owl, all in the garden of the house. Really incredible. So that's it, uh, heading back. We still haven't finished birding. We're over 150 species for the weekend and incredible stuff, including the stuff in the garden on the last morning with breakfast. But yeah, that ends uh, KZN winter birding bash and we'll see if we can crack maybe 175 for the trip by the time we get home. That is a spectacular surprise on our way to Myanmar on the way home. And we've just stopped on the side of the road for white-bellied bustards. Uh, very endangered and really spectacular to see. So we're finishing with coffee near Siakoi Flay, uh, just outside Myrmel. Uh, final stop on our way home. Nothing major to add, a couple of, couple of common species. And we've ended up on 168 for the trip, which is a spectacular record. Um, yeah, I mean, in winter, yes, we went down to KZN and then back up through the Free State, but 168 species in 48 hours is, is, is pretty cool going for the middle of winter.